It's Tuesday, January 11th, and this is now on HNN. And we are firmly committed to restoring safe drinking water in a manner that builds trust and protects the land and the waters of Hawaii. The Navy says it will comply with the state's emergency order to drain its Red Hill underground fuel storage tanks. COVID hospitalizations in the U.S. have reached an all-time high. I'm Michael George with the surging cases, the staffing shortages, and a nationwide blood shortage. Honolulu's prosecutor says he's disappointed a judge acquitted State Representative Sharon Har, who is charged with driving under the influence. These stories, plus the IRS is warning it could be a frustrating tax season. Details just ahead on This Is Now. Aloha and thank you for being with us on what is shaping up to be an absolutely gorgeous Tuesday. I'm Casey Lund filling in for Jonathan Sapi, who's got some well-deserved time off alongside Ashley Nagaoka. And Ash, our top story today, uh, what's happening with the Red Hill water crisis and some good news. That's right. The Navy is giving up its fight and is now agreeing to shut down operations at Red Hill and empty those massive fuel tanks. Now today on Capitol Hill during a House Armed Services Committee hearing, congressional leaders had a lot of questions about the Navy's plan. Am I correct in assuming from your answer, which Congressman Kelly also assumed that the Navy will comply with the emergency order? Sir, yes, we we are complying with the emergency order, and and we have already begun uh, taking steps along every one of the lines directed in the order. That order was originally issued on December 6th. The Navy later called it a request. This morning, Congressman Kai Kahele spoke to Hawaii News Now about what he learned from that committee hearing. The biggest thing we got out of the hearing this morning is that the Navy will comply with the state's emergency order. Um, they acknowledge that. They are in the process of, of doing that and complying with that order, which requires them to select a third party to do an assessment. Uh, to provide that assessment uh, by the 2nd of February. Uh, that is an ambitious timeline. That's in 23 days. And that was a question we asked. Can the Navy meet that timeline um, to do that? We'll have to see. Uh, they said the right things this morning, uh, but follow through and execution are the next steps. And, and we will hold them accountable to that. And we wanted to bring Mihailani Richardson in, who's been covering this since the beginning, Mihaela. And uh, I want to ask, there's still a lot more information to get. So I want to have you give us uh, your what you gathered from that hearing and from your coverage last night when we first learned about this. But one of the things we still need to learn more about are those incidents on May 6th and November 20th. Um, Kaika Hele is really going to drill down on that. That's right, and so is a U.S. Representative Ed Case. So the Navy has said for a few weeks now that the May 6th spill could be linked to the November 20th spill, and this is part of their internal investigation, and that we've been learning over time that the spill could be actually much larger than what was originally reported. Now, during today's hearings, a Representative Case held the Navy to task because at this point the Navy says that it's operator error. It could have been uh, maybe a button pusher or something. And he said, don't just solely focus on operator error. In fact, he called it wrong. It, could, it would be a mistake to just focus on the person who made the mistake because the Red Hill fuel tanks are more than 80 years old. So there are p potentially systemic issues with the tanks. I've been here only four years and I've re reported on uh, possible leaks and, and that uh, quite a bit over those years. And one thing that I really want to get to, and I think this is the most important takeaway, those families that are still displaced, still dealing with this on a daily basis when can they expect to go home uh, i know the timeline that removing the fuel from the tanks has kind of been set and we'll see if that happens but uh, do we have any idea when the folks that are affected are going to be uh, made whole i guess well let's not forget that thousands of families have been dealing with this immediate crisis since thanksgiving yeah. weekend thanksgiving weekend and so initially the navy said we hope to have the families back home be by christmas and I think a lot of people doubted that. And then quickly after that, the Army said it's not going to be 
until uh, mid-January, folks. And so it was a more blunt assessment. And then uh, more recent tests in the Alia Manu military reservation area after their system flush uh, came back more than 200 parts per billion of contamination. So the water in at least Alia Manu military reservation is still contaminated. And now the Army is telling families that those families in AMR might not be home until mid-February. Yeah, and that is a really difficult thing to continue to deal with. Mahalani Richardson, uh, thank you so much for staying on top of this. I know there's still quite a bit to learn. Of course, we'll have the latest. Let's get to Ashley and more news. Now to the pandemic, the state is reporting 2,929 new COVID infections today. Close to 2,000 cases are on Oahu, about 500 on Maui, and the Big Island and Kauai also reporting triple digits today. The COVID surge is having a major impact on workforces, especially at schools. According to data from the Department of Education, an additional 900 positive COVID cases have been added to last week's counts. Hundreds of teachers are having to quarantine, and substitute teacher coverage can be difficult, forcing schools to improvise. Today, state epidemiologist Dr. Sarah Kemble and interim superintendent Keith Hayashi held a briefing to discuss updated guidance for public schools. So for isolation, students and staff who test positive for COVID-19 or have COVID-19 symptoms should isolate for five days regardless of their vaccination status. They can return to school when all of the following conditions are met. Five full days have passed since symptoms first appeared or since their positive test was conducted. No fever for 24 hours, and they have no symptoms or symptoms have improved. For quarantine, students and staff who've been in close contact with a person with COVID-19 should quarantine for five days after their last contact. Quarantine applies to those who have not completed their primary vaccine series or two shots of Pfizer and Moderna um, and those who are 18 or older and have completed their primary vaccine series but have not received a recommended booster when eligible. Students and staff should get tested on day five of quarantine, even if they don't have symptoms. The students and staff are not required to quarantine if they're age five to 17 and have completed their primary series. In other words, two shots of Pfizer or Moderna, or if they're 18 and older and have received all their recommended vaccine doses, including boosters. We're closely monitoring student attendance. Uh, some, while some schools are seeing drops in student attendance, primarily a preliminary data that we're taking a look at and we're monitoring, shows most of our schools are actually holding steady, or in some cases actually seeing a boost in attendance uh, this week compared to last week. Uh, by geographic region, uh, about nine of our 15 complexes, uh, student attendance overall in the complex is up, which indicates that our schools are working definitely hard in trying to do everything they can to ensure that in-person learning is happening and, um, and so that our students can remain in school uh, to support our students and our communities. The Queens Medical Center West says it's experiencing staffing and capacity issues and has declared an internal emergency. The facility says the number of patients are exceeding available beds. Queens says there were 112 patients, but it only has capacity of 104 beds. There were also 58 people in the emergency room. That emergency declaration sets in motion protocols at the hospital to reduce the number of patients. They emphasize there is no hospital shutdown. Queens also says 96 providers are out due to COVID exposure. It's a problem hospitals across the nation are struggling with. There's now a national blood shortage crisis. Michael George has the latest from New York. With COVID hospitalizations at an all-time high in the U.S., senators pressed federal health officials on what they're doing to control the virus. At times, it doesn't seem like anyone's in charge. It is a very wily virus. It has fooled everybody all the time, from the time it first came in to Delta to now Omicron. Very unpredictable, and we're doing the best we possibly can. Health officials responded to criticism that COVID tests are in short supply. We're continuing to uh, bring tests to the American people. As a result, the president has announced and we are in the process of procuring the 500 million tests, which every American household will be able to order and have shipped directly to their house. Across the country, hospitals are also facing a dangerously low blood supply. 
prompting the American Red Cross to declare the first ever national blood crisis. Our inventories are at the lowest that they have been in over a decade. Red Cross Medical Director Dr. Bialaski says COVID is preventing many people from donating and there are fewer blood drives for those willing to donate. Are we at a point where uh, doctors are having to make some difficult decisions because of the limited supply? Uh, they are having to decide how that blood will be used and what is uh, most and most immediate need and sometimes that's a tough call. And in Chicago, a 14-year-old has joined the battle against COVID. Eli Kustin built a computer program to search online for home tests, helping visitors to his website find available tests and have them shipped directly to their home. Michael George, CBS News, New York. The Queens Health Systems is keeping its extended hours at its Blaisdell COVID vaccination clinic. The clinic is open every day, 7.30 a.m. to 8 p.m., except Sundays and Tuesdays. Vaccinations are available by appointment or by walk-in. To make an appointment, visit covid.queens.org slash vaccine. On Maui, you can get a free test kit today. The drive through event is at the parking lot of Kula Malu Park in Pukalani. It starts at 4 p.m. and the kits will be handed out on a first-come, first-served basis. Tomorrow's distribution event is at the South Maui Community Park Gymnasium in Kihei. Starting this Saturday, COVID testing will be covered under insurance. Insurance companies will be required to cover at least eight free over-the-counter tests per individual each month. The White House says they will launch a hotline later this week to provide more information. Meanwhile, Governor Ige says the state's effort to get more rapid tests has failed. We've been trying to get a commitment to purchase large quantities of these tests, and we just have not been able to do it. We, we can't find a, a vendor who wants to sell it to us. You know, the federal government is buying, uh, and we have been outbid in um, seeking tests by other states and other uh, entities. So uh, that is a challenge. The governor says overall there is capacity for enough tests at local pharmacies, clinics and mass testing sites, but people may need to shop around to find a place if their first choice is not available. Japan says its borders will remain closed to most foreigners through February. The country briefly relaxed entry requirements in November after case numbers plummeted, but that changed after Omicron was detected last month. Japan has one of the highest vaccination rates in the world, but its booster rollout has been slow. So far, less than 1% of Japan's population has received a booster shot. Flights on the West Coast came to a standstill. For a few minutes yesterday, the same time North Korea test-fired another suspected ballistic missile. South Korea detected the suspected missile overnight, which landed in the Sea of Japan. The South says it flew faster than the one fired last week, which the North claimed was a hypersonic weapon. North Korea hasn't tested any long-range missiles that could directly threaten the U.S. since 2017. But since attempts at diplomacy collapsed in 2019 between leader Kim Jong-un and then-President Trump, the North's testing of short-range weapons has shifted into overdrive. Honolulu's prosecutor Steve Alm says he's disappointed a judge dismissed the drunk driving charges against State Representative Sharon Har, who was arrested back in February after leaving a McCulley restaurant. Alm will be holding a press conference this afternoon. Lacey Denise has more. The arresting officers took the stand yesterday, but the judge found there was not enough evidence to convict the lawmaker. There was no blood alcohol information or field sobriety test results to prove she was drunk when she was pulled over for driving the wrong way on Baratenia Street. Har's attorney called it a mistake, not a crime. She's from Kapolei, don't forget. And her, not only the uh, constituency, her family, her work, is all in Kapolei, uh, and she's not as familiar with the back streets of Makali and the Mo'ili'ili area. Har represents Makakilo and Kapolei. The Honolulu prosecutor's office said it is disappointed by the judge's decision. Again, there will be a press conference on the decision coming up today at 2 p.m. Stay with Hawaii News Now for the latest. For This Is Now, I'm Lacey Denise. Surf's up on Oahu's North Shore. This swell is the latest in a series we've had over the last week. Our Sammy Selina has more from Waimea Bay.
Lifeguards posted these signs at Waimea. No swimming, strong current, don't go out. They want folks to be safe during this high surf warning because right now they're short on workers, so they want folks to help them out. We are trying to stretch a little bit the staffing levels because uh, with all that's going on right now, you know, in, uh, around the world and in, uh, here in Oahu, uh, we have a lot of people that are in isolation, in quarantine, and um, we are working on a little short staff almost every other day. We've heard from pro surfers that some conditions today were even preventing some of them from getting in the water. Today would have been less ideal for a competition because of the combination of big waves and wind, but the pros tell me they are very thankful for this season. It's amazing. And they always say you don't miss something until it's gone. And I didn't know how much I missed it. I knew I missed it, but I never knew how much I missed it till I was in the water with my brothers out at Pipeline uh, the other day during the SUP event for the, the Hui Baptor shootout. And we we're all just talking like how good it was out to be out in the water again. Officials with Dahui Backdoor Shootout said that while today was called off, they're very hopeful that tomorrow will be a go. Sammy Solina for This Is Now. Thank you, Sammy. Would love to get up there and check that out. Oh, well, yeah. take a look, Ash. Beautiful, mm -hmm. gorgeous Tuesday afternoon uh, here in downtown Honolulu. What can we expect for the rest of your work week? Let's check in with Guy Hockey. On this Tuesday, the high surf warning has been extended until tomorrow morning. And all these sh areas shaded in red are the areas that are uh, going to get really dangerous surf. Now, for today here on Oahu, we're talking 30 to 40 feet. But because the winds are uh, coming in from the north, conditions are choppy, sloppy, not likely good at all. West side's likely a little bit better. But we're only talking about a handful of surfers that can handle that stuff, really professional stuff. And on the south shore, though, there's some fun waves. With those northern winds, conditions look nice. Now, there's a weak front. You really can't even see it. It's going to bring in a few windward and mauka showers, mainly for Maui County and the Big Island. Rainfall totals will be insignificant. Drier weather expected for Kauai and for Oahu. So this is what we're looking at today. Stronger north-northeasterly winds, a cool air mass is dropping in, too. We still are expecting a fair bit of sunshine. And again, whatever rain comes in will be favoring the east end of the state. UV index is running high at 6. There are those winds predominantly from the north, and that's why there's a little bit of a chill in the air. And those winds will be running steady today, slower tomorrow, and drier conditions tomorrow as well. And then with the winds lightening up on Thursday, we could see some pop-up showers, not widespread pop-up showers around the mountains. They may even be briefly heavy late in the day. We're less than two years into the new year, but the federal government says now is the time to start thinking about tax season. The IRS is warning about frustrations and challenges caused by the pandemic and years of budget cuts. Tom Costello has more on what you need to know. The April 18th tax filing deadline may be more than three months away, but the Treasury Department is warning Americans now that the upcoming tax filing season could be frustrating. Agency officials say they're facing enormous challenges, among them the pandemic. There's a lot more work for the IRS to do with a lot fewer staff members doing it. While the U.S. population has grown over the past half century, IRS staffing is now at the same level it was more than 50 years ago, with fewer than 15,000 workers available last year to handle more than 240 million calls. To make matters worse, the agency is using outdated technology and has also seen its budget slashed nearly 20% over the past 10 years. The best way to avoid refund delays this year, file early electronically and ditch the paper forms. As of last month, the agency still had a backlog of millions of unprocessed returns from the year before. For those who made less than $73,000, the IRS offers free file. And companies like H&R Block and TurboTax offer their own software for e-filing too. E-filing with direct deposit that's the quick, quickest way to get your tax refund. The IRS says people who file electronically with direct deposit should not experience issues and should receive their refund within 21 days. So it's important to file electronically to make sure that the, everything is accurate and that it's filed electronically so that you can possibly get your refund sooner rather than later. We're checking out news from the feeds today in an effort to stop the spread of COVID robots 
are going to be serving up food in Beijing ahead of the 2022 Winter Olympics, just right around the corner. Journalists arriving early to cover the games have been among the first to have their food served up to them remotely. Oh, look, it's happening oh, from the ceiling. I want mine on a drone or I'm not happy. <laughs> E uh, noodles, even burgers, are all being prepared electronically and then delivered. As you saw, the Winter Olympics will have stricter COVID protocols for visiting media, athletes, and officials than Tokyo because we know things got kind of bad there for a while. Mm -hmm. With everyone confined to a bubble, which they can't leave, no interaction between those inside and those outside. And honestly, Ash, that is cool, but I feel like we're all um, not very far away from having food robots. served by robots, yeah. <laughs> which I'm not okay with. Sadly, but, I know. Check yeah. this out, you guys. This is really cool. A medical first in the operating room as surgeons from the University of Maryland Medical Center transplanted a genetically modified pig heart into a 57 year old man now patient david bennett's advanced heart disease made him ineligible for a human organ he's awake now and recovering after the seven hour surgery bennett agreed to the experimental procedure despite a slim chance of success and although it's too soon to know the long-term success of the surgery doctors say it can offer hope to similar patients very cool. Yeah. I know that people have the valves, you mm -hmm. know, a piece of a pig heart, but yeah, not always the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, groundbreaking cool. there. And good news now, new coins featuring prominent women in U.S. history have begun shipping out of banks this week. Natalie Brand speaks to a Smithsonian historian about how and why the women were chosen. It's change that reflects the power of women and diversity in our nation's history. A reminder now featured on a special series of coins shipping out to banks this week with poet and civil rights leader Maya Angelou as the first black woman to appear on a U.S. quarter. When you hold that quarter and you see someone in your lifetime that you've heard of or that you've read about in history, that is a teachable and, uh, and a defining moment in our lives. And what does it symbolize? It symbolizes women are powerful, women are prominent. Deputy Director of the United States Mint, Ventress Gibson, was appointed as the first African American to lead the agency. The Mint produces nearly 15 billion coins a year. So to have women uh, as part of uh, our, our economy in that perspective when it comes to coins is huge. The other women honored this year are first female astronaut Sally Ride, the first female chief of the Cherokee Nation Wilma Mankiller, Latina suffrage leader Nina Otero Warren, and the first Chinese American film star Anna Mae Wong. The coin's other side will still depict founding father George Washington. They're pairing these two entities together to say this is an American icon and we should remember that Everyone is a part of this national story. Smithsonian curator Angela Tate says the museum's Women's History Initiative had a role in the selections. Our process has been to compile lists of significant women and to discuss and think about national and international and local impact. This year's five honorees are the first as part of a four-year program approved by Congress to celebrate the contributions of American women across various backgrounds and fields. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. Yeah, it's sad that we're this far, uh, you know, into 2022, mm -hmm. and we there still aren't a lot of women representation on currency. Yeah, Very cool. but I'm so excited to, like, find those yeah. and come across them. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it for us on This Is Now, you guys. We have a 2 p.m. press conference coming up with uh, Honolulu prosecutor Steve Almagan. That's his reaction to the uh,